No one is entirely sure why, or even how, the mighty Stonehenge was built around 5,000 years ago. A study published recently in the journal Antiquity, shows the largest stones at Stonehenge in southwest England, may embody a solar calendar with 365 and one quarter days each year, almost the same as the 365.2425 days used in modern solar calendars. To understand how the Stonehenge calendar worked, the research looked at numerology, which is the study of the meaning of numbers with the stones themselves. The research has analyzed the numbers and positioning of Stonehenge's great sandstone slabs, called sarsens. Sarsens form all 15 stones of Stonehenge's central horseshoe, the uprights and lintels of the outer circle, as well as outlying stones, such as the heel stone, the slaughter stone and the station stones. The entire site was the physical representation of one month, lasting 30 days. The 30 stones in the Sarsen circle each represented one day within the month. It's thought that people at Stonehenge simply marked the days of the month, each represented by a stone, perhaps using a small stone or a wooden peg. Although no one can be certain why Stonehenge was built, it was thought that it served as an ancient calendar that has long existed. Other theories include that it was a cult center for healing, a temple, a place where ancestors were worshipped or even a graveyard. Stonehenge has long been thought to incorporate some kind of calendar, although its specific purpose and exactly how it worked remain far from clear. Understanding the Sarsen elements as a unified group, and recognizing the numerical significance of the elements in each component, opens up the possibility, that they represent the building blocks of a simple and elegant perpetual calendar, based on the 365.25 solar days in a mean tropical year. It's already known that the whole layout of Stonehenge, is positioned in relation to the solstices, or the extreme limits of the sun's movement. As English Heritage explains, at Stonehenge on the summer solstice, the sun rises behind the heel stone in the northeast part of the horizon, and its first rays shine into the heart of Stonehenge. Observers at Stonehenge at the winter solstice, standing in the enclosure entrance and facing the center of the stones, can watch the sunset in the southwest part of the horizon. With this new study, it seems like dwellers at the famous Henge not only used to track times of the year, but days of the month too. Recent research had shown that Stonehenge's sarsens were added during the same phase of construction, around 2500 BC. They were sourced from the same area, and subsequently remained in the same formation, indicating they worked as a single unit. When Stonehenge was built, one month consisted of three weeks. Each of these weeks consisted of ten days. There are distinctive stones in the circle that mark the start of each of these three weeks in the month. The 10-day week was a key part of the Egyptian civil calendar from about 2600 BC. Such a solar calendar was developed in the Eastern Mediterranean in the centuries after 3000 BC, and was adopted in Egypt as the civil calendar around 2700, and was widely used at the start of the Old Kingdom about 2600 BC. This raises the possibility that the calendar tracked by Stonehenge may stem from the influence of one of these other cultures. Nearby finds hint at such cultural connections, the nearby Amesbury Archer, buried nearby around the same period, was born in the Alps and moved to Britain as a teenager. Additionally, an intercalary month of five days and a leap day every four years were needed to match the solar year. The intercalary month, probably dedicated to the deities of the site, is represented by the five trilithons in the center of the site. The four station stones outside the Sarsen circle provide markers to notch up until a leave day. As such, the winter and summer solstices would be framed by the same pairs of stones every year. One of the trilithons also frames the winter solstice, indicating it may have been the new year. This solstitial alignment also helps calibrate the calendar, any errors in counting the days, would be easily detectable as the sun would be in the wrong place on the solstices. Finding a solar calendar represented in the architecture of Stonehenge opens up a new way of seeing the monument as a place for the living. A place where the timing of ceremonies and festivals was connected to the very fabric of the universe and celestial movements in the heavens.